upstairs. Finally get to fabric. Super excited. Welcome everybody. Episode 3 of the Volvo 1999 Volvo S70 V70 reupholster of the interior. Just as a reminder of what we're doing, I have door panels that came out of my daughter's uh, 99 Volvo S70 V70. Bubble fabric pulling away, sort of looks horrible. Uh, and talked to her and she liked the idea of doing a two-tone. So going with a gray that matches the uh, gray of the controls on the inside. And color test, there we go. It's one of the uh, door pieces. This is the gray I was trying to match. That is pretty, pretty damn close. I would say that's as close as I'm gonna get. I guess we are at what you would call the uh, point of no return. Point of no return is peeling the old fabric off. Essentially what I'm doing is getting in here with my thumb and just gently peeling that. And you gotta do this the entire way if you wanna reuse the foam, otherwise you're recutting foam and having to figure out all the angles and everything with the foam would not be a good time, so. Also want to be careful not to pull the foam away from the underneath. I'll re-glue a few areas of this foam to make sure it stays down, but um, we're trying to just remove the top and not peel the foam away too. on camera but the uh, foam right here or is it right here the foam has pulled away from the uh, material underneath the fake particle board cardboard stuff whatever it is so I'm gonna have to actually peel the foam up spray adhesive lay the foam back down and then you know get it all nice and flat so I've also pulled up you can see it's pulled up in some places already too so the foam needs a little work. So I've got some adhesive, it's a spray adhesive. We're gonna give a shot and see if we can spray that. But of course I now have to expose that little bubble and then try and spray down the rest. So we're gonna give this stuff a try. It's a uh, foam adhesive. Uh, got this at Joanne's Fabrics of all places. So no idea how well this is gonna work. I've not used this particular brand before, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. No glove, no love. Yeah, it would have actually helped if I was recording that the whole time. Yeah, totally did all this work and you saw none of it because I stopped the camera. So, anyway, sprayed the foam, fixed the thing. Sorry you didn't see it. All right, so, bit of a minor change of plan. So, originally laid out the fabric and was planning on sort of doing triangle cuts. So, I was going to cut out a triangle and then replace that with a separate piece of fabric and the inner triangle was going to be a little smaller than the opening I made and that was going to cause the fabric to have to dive down and kind of make that concave shape. Uh, turns out that's the hard way to do it because getting the point of that triangle to actually be flat and not look stupid is next to impossible. So I spent most of the day yesterday 
um, cutting and stitching and trying to get the thing to look good. Had a good uh, French seam on one piece and then would fold the other piece onto it and try to stitch that one and the, it wouldn't line up properly and kind of had a brainstorm last night and realized I was doing it all wrong. And the best way to go about doing this literally is just to make a cut and then fold that cut over and I'll have to open up the, uh, the point of that cut just a tiny little bit so that I can fold it over um, so that it doesn't stick out. But I think that will actually work out pretty good. So I'm going to try a, a couple of test cuts and then I'm going to reshape the fabric that I have and, and kind of figure out where to make the cuts on a new piece. Uh, I cut a blank and cut it way too big, so I wasted a bunch of fabric, but I, I might be able to get two tries out of this. Uh, but we'll see. I, I don't want to keep wasting fabric because I want to do the back doors eventually too. But if this works and is easier, then I think we'll be good to go from here. So, fingers crossed, and we'll see what happens. So I probably should explain what I'm doing in this clip here. So I'm actually measuring out the overlap uh, and I ended up using a pair of high precision calipers. It's probably a little bit overkill for what I was uh, doing in this case. But essentially what you're doing is taking the amount that you've overlapped the fabric and then dividing that in half and that's going to be where your seam point is because you want the seam to go straight down the middle between those two pieces and that'll make sense in a second hopefully. But that is the point to measuring this out and sort of writing down all of them so that when I overlay them and then sew them on the sewing machine I know exactly where that seam goes. So in this clip we uh, continue measuring out and you'll notice we're actually measuring on the back side of the fabric now so all of your stitching will be relative to the back side you're never going to stitch directly from the front side except on the French seams uh, and I'll explain those in a little bit. So just measuring out the back side where the stitch is going to go so I have a line to follow on the sewing machine. So I've got the lines all marked out and the whole idea is we're going to fold this over and stitch from the corner up the line all the way to the end. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to stitch from the corner here all the way up to the end. And we're going to fold it over and do a French seam, possibly, or I may just leave it as a standard seam without any sort of decoration to it if it looks pretty good. But let's give it a try and then go see if it fits, shall we? So I actually did decide to do a French seam in this case. So a French seam is essentially a, a central seam with two decorative stitches along each side. It's very common in automotive upholstery, especially in seats and uh, along dashboards and that kind of thing. Looks pretty nice if done right. Uh, the central stitch, the seam, I'm sorry, should be a very tight stitch. Uh, and the decorative stitches for the French seam on either side are going to be a much wider stitch. 
Uh, so I used a one on the central stitch and a four on the uh, decorative seams or on the decorative stitches. Uh, and that's pretty common to do that. They're, they're not as reinforcing. They're meant just to be uh, kind of appealing to look at. Google French seam if you want to know more. There's a million videos out there on how to do one. So making some good progress here. Got a whole uh, you know, pile of old threads, and sure, cool. But uh, you know, few few wrinkles in areas that aren't great. But overall, the shape is there. I'm actually pretty much at the point now where I want to adhesive this down and like you know, clamp it in places where I can clamp it, and put some try to put some weight or something in here so that when it's stuck in there it actually you know sort of makes the shape I want it to make this is kind of the point of no return this is now the piece that's gonna live in here uh, gonna essentially glue it down and then trim it uh, but otherwise I'm uh, I'm fairly happy with this gonna go throw some gloves on and uh, getting close you know just to show you guys on the underside what I was doing with the sewing machine so if we flip this over you can actually see here's a better better example so this is folded back for where the French stitch is, but this, there because these are triangles, it, it, when it got thin down here, there wasn't enough to fold over. So I did trim this back as much as I could. Uh, need to trim this back a little bit here, uh, just so it doesn't, just so it lays as flat as it can. Uh, but otherwise, that's that's essentially what the other side of that French seam looks like. Uh, probably could have laid it out a little bit flatter, but uh, it's just sort of as tight as I could make it by hand and. Uh, Best to uh, make sure this foam is as clean as it possibly can. You know, he has a few like cat hairs and things, but overall this is pretty good. So there's a piece. It's down in there like that. Um, the spray is permanent if you do both sides, so it's, it's really hard to move if you spray the adhesive on both sides, but that's really the best way to do it. I'm going to try to make this a, a one-shot deal and if it doesn't work I will rip the foam up and literally start from scratch I don't want to have to do that so yeah hopefully uh, hopefully we can make this work so wish me luck uh, so gloves obviously this spray adhesive is nasty stuff also safety goggles I do not want a chance getting any of this stuff in my eyes um, this is a just a, a foam adhesive uh, specifically made to foam the fabric. Um, it sort of rests on top of the foam and just becomes really, really sticky. Uh, I'm gonna weigh it down once I once I put the fabric on. I'll weigh it down. Uh, but I think the fabric's pretty good. I think this is gonna actually come out and look all right. So spray everything down. Um, so let's spray this separately. Do this as like a two-step thing here. So. Just gotta be quick with it. to weigh this stuff down totally don't have to uh, once it's on it is on absolutely no worry about that coming up at all so got a tiny 
Uh, this isn't it's not quite ideal there, but you know what? Honestly, that doesn't look too bad. Once all the controls are in, all the holes are cut out and everything, I actually think that'll look pretty good. So next step to this whole process here is reattaching that speaker grill that I took off. So the idea is just some short little uh, wood screws, right, and maybe a uh, washer. So wood screws maybe not the best, but I, I want them sharp, so wood screws seem to work. And uh, trying to find a drill bit that will still allow these screws to bite a little bit. And hopefully I have one. making it up as we go along. seal there and now we got to cut out the holes for all the controls so now we have holes for the controls and the door handle and everything all of that got to come out so we uh, you know, sort of do the best we can to uh, cut those and that they're actually gonna help keep everything pretty uh, you know nice and tight for the most part so uh, I'm going to try to do this by sort of holding up underneath and then hoping I don't cut my fingers off. Perfect. And there we go. That actually looks pretty good. So we figured out what the hot glue comes from. They were trying, there's some of it right there, there's some more of it over here. They were actually, the, the previous owner of this vehicle was attempting to glue this to this. And I mean, they are supposed to be glued together, but yeah, hot glue was their, that was their thought. So things we have left to do. So I'm gonna re-glue this. So remember we cut all the glue here and pulled this off and then this needs to be glued down here. Uh, these clips were out, so these are loose right now and need to be glued back in. Another, another clip over there. So gotta drill a hole here so we can get the, uh, the thing through. So I'll probably do that, that'll take two seconds. Peel off a little bit more of this hot glue cause oh my God. And then uh, use some clamps and glue that all back in. So gonna set the camera up and uh, probably time lapse that. And uh, yeah, then we'll go hang the door panel back in the car.
spillage. But all clamped, glued, you know, using a bunch of books to weigh it down, doing our best to just get the whole panel back to where it needs to be. So, yeah. Last thing that needs to be glued down is this and wedged it with some washers. That was the best I could come up with. And just gonna hit it with a bunch of glue. And it's already in there pretty good. I don't, and honestly, it probably wouldn't pop out, but you know, you yank on that handle a little too much and it is gonna come out. So literally the factory just gobbed up the goop and we're gonna do the same. seems to be uh, pretty well solid. I don't think it's fully cured, but uh, yeah, might as well uh, pull the clamps off. It's not moving at all, and uh, it seems to be all right at this point. I mean, every, so everything's in there, and I'm uh, pretty excited to go mount it in the car and see what it looks like. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so moment of truth. Time to install the door panel. It's good, I wanna see what it looks like. Hook it all back up and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I've got some of these coming, by the way. Little, uh, the little tabs that go in where the uh, the lock is, so that will so make it. We just do what we did the first time, but in reverse. First thing I'm gonna do though is hook up all the stuffs. So this goes back in here. See it. So. One. Two. Three, and then the way this goes in, there's a slit here that this goes down into. Like that. Should actually push down a little farther than there, I thought. There's that. There is a T25 Torx that we took out of right here. finish tight, tightening that afterwards and then bring the camera down here so you can see up underneath. We redid all the door clips. As you can see the holes. They just got to get them all lined up and they should just pop right back in. Just a matter of making sure they're all lined up. Of course, not the easiest thing to get them clipped in. Like that. There. Nice satisfying click when you get them in. I like the tan with it. I do too. I feel like it's not quite snapped all the way in there, but no. I think that one was broken and I'm going to end up ordering a new one. But I, yeah, I kind of like the tan. There you go. Tan. I kind of like the tan. 
gonna do too. And this is all now nice and tight. Like remember before, this was all loose. This was broken here. Mm -hmm. So there's still a tiny little bit. I mean, it's an old car. There's a little bit of damage, but this is nice. Before you would pull on this and the whole door panel would rattle. I mean, this is a, here, give me the camera. We're gonna make a nice satisfying thunk when we close the door now. Ready? And no rattle, no nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Even matches the seatbelts. That's oh, kind of perfect. Oh, if you made it this far, I appreciate you sticking with this project for as long as we have. Uh, got uh, three more door panels to do, but we got one down and uh, moving forward with the rest of them. So really appreciate you guys sticking around for all this. Hopefully this helps somebody and uh, kind of enjoyed making this one. I've got a few more projects on the same car and about six or seven other videos that are already lined up. So moving forward to this, if you like what you see, subscribe and more to come. Take care, everyone. Uh, but the grill's back in. Or did what? A bug. It's a tiny little fly, Leah. Okay. Come on, focus. Yes, but... Of course, it broke some plastic. Okay, lady, let me go by. Okay, lady, let me go by. Okay, lady, Stick and hold pretty well, so... Let's try that again. More work. All right, hopefully that's in the shot there. Oh, I'm turn this a little bit. All right, so hopefully this makes sense now. I got all my lines marked out. I mean, I've got like two of them there, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'm in the middle of recording and talking and you guys are all like, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know you were recording. I thought you were. You didn't realize I was, okay. I knew you were talking, but I thought you were trying to talk to us. Nope, sorry. Like My bad. Okay. All right, let's try that again now that the kids aren't talking.